ओम सहनावतु सहनोभुनक्तु सह वीर सरवाभ तेजस्वीनावदीतमस्तुम विद्विषाभ ओम शांति शांति प्रॉमिस श्रीधर भक्ति नारद भक्ति सूत्र बट आई डिसाइडेड टू कीप द सूत्र एंड टॉक अबाउट भक्ति नाउ भक्ति इज अ वेरी लूजली यूज वर्ड एवरीबडी हैज सम भक्ति और द अदर हजबेंड हैव वाइफ भक्ति वाइफ हैव हजबेंड भक्ति सम पीपल हैव भक्ति आउटसाइड द फैमिली सम एंड ऑफकोर्स वी हैव भक्ति टूवर्ड्स अवर इष्ट देवता एंड भक्ति टूवर्ड्स द सुप्रीम देन देर इज गुरु भक्ति सो देर इज अ वर्ड विच इज इन यूज so we need to look a little closely at this this is what narada bhakti sutra actually does <coughs> so for this <coughs> we need to first look at this wonderful being called narada who was supposed to be the author of the bhakti sutra usually if somebody carries tales and we will say he is behaving like narada so but the thing is whenever narada creates a problem we carrying tales from one to the other is usually to sort out some problem so it's not as if it's a he's just a gossiper uh, it, whenever there is a situation narada appears and he sorts it out in his own way this is what it is <clears throat> and how best to sort it out when we live in a gossip filled world so now uh, is supposed to you have seen or heard or read about narada at least in pictures he carries a veena and is eternally wandering and when narada ascends i mean descends anywhere usually the rishis hear first the sound narayana narayana and then he comes and he has a veena in his hand always in carry two things the author of the narada bhakti sutra first is a wanderer so he is ideally qualified to write on bhakti first he is a wanderer there is no fixed place where narada is which means he is doesn't have a nivasa as such he is homeless well he has a home which is in bhakti in the lord apart from that he has no home today in the in abroad when you use the word homeless it's a derogatory for oh, this guy doesn't have an address actually narada is an addressless man completely homeless one day is here another day is there and according to the puranas his mode of transport is aerial doesn't have to wait reach the airport two hours before the flight <laughs> we get in and drive all the way to the home another maybe one and a half he just imagines i have to go there and is there this is aerial mode of transport two that is he always says narayana narayana will come to that now this narada how did he become like this so in the puranas there is a genesis the beginning of narada how narada came into existence very interesting the purana say that once upon a time the forest of nimisharanya there lived a poor lady who served the sages who served the rishis the yogis and so on no purana says who her husband is it only says that she served the rishis and from some rishi probably we don't know who narada was born so if he had asked the aadhar card father's name he would have got <laughs> parab brahma <laughs> <laughs> his aadhar was that his mother was there 
that is Radha. And he, at a small age, young age, he lived with his mother, who owed her existence to washing the plates of the rishis who came, to uh, looking after their needs, washing their feet if they came in from the dust, cooking for them. So she, her life was completely dedicated to the rishis whom she served. And Narada, being a small boy, also did service to the rishis. Once a lot of rishis came. That time there were a lot of rishis came. And he did a lot of service to them. Massaged their feet, brought water, fed them and so on. So, when the rishis left, they left some food which they had not eaten. So, when they left, he ate up that food. Not to say that anybody should stash, snatch my plate after <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I had this trouble in Dubai. <laughs> they wouldn't even allow me to finish my food. <laughs> so I decided when I am towards the end of the meal to hold the food. <laughs> I will run away. Then you can hear some giggling in the kitchen. So anyway, so some food was left behind and <laughs> Narada ate that food. And uh, already he was doing seva. So if you should study the life of Narada to see what bhakti is. Already he did seva. He had no ancestry. I mean nobody knows. He had lost all that. His mother, of course, she looked after him. And he served the rishis. So through serving and through satsanga, then only bhakti can be ignited in the mind. Doesn't come otherwise. And he ate that food that was left over. When he, after that, his, his mind also changed quite a bit. He became kind of intoxicated with bhakti, his devotion to the Lord. Then, some days passed, a snake bit his mother. His final connection with the world, <coughs> mother died. What would a normal person think? Weep and sit there, my mother died. What did Narada do? He said, my last attachment, my last connection is over. So I have nothing more to do with the world. This is bhakti. People confuse, you know, bhakti means simply sitting and singing. This is my last connection with the world. I have nothing to do with the world anymore. The only thing I was linked with is also gone. So he went and sat near the river under the peepal tree and meditated and prayed and sang songs, meditated on the feet of the Lord. He had a darshan. The darshan, more than the Puranas don't describe the figure, but they describe that he had he was filled with ecstasy when he had the darshan. And his hair stood on end. That's how it is described. Now how the hair <laughs> Then, after a little while of his enjoyment, the Puranas say that the Lord who had given Darshan suddenly disappeared. Narada was very shaken by grief, broken by grief, and he wept. Say, in this case, why did you come at all? And show your face and disappear. What kind of a game is this? So, the supreme reality who manifested in front of him in some form, probably Narayana, told him, we don't know because all these matters are not in detail, told him, listen, in this life, this is all you are qualified to get. But, after some time, you lead a religious life, you lead a life of penance and meditation, uh, always thinking of the Lord. And then when you die, 
in the next life you will be born under such circumstances that you will be constantly in touch with me. Always. There is not a single moment when I will be away from you. So Narada spent some time going to different ashramas or rishis, living a simple life, meditating and so on. And then when the time came to die, when did the time come to die? The next kalpa was about to start and destruction was right there before it. <laughs> one man mantra was being finished, one kalpa was being finished. So this, according to the story of creation in the Puranas, all that we see is when Brahma breathes out. <laughs> you not imagine Brahma with four heads, but it's a breathing out. And the, the pralaya, the distraction is when Brahma breathes in, whatever is there goes out. Whatever is outside goes in, which means the seeds of whatever is outside are there in seed form. And when it is breathed out, the seeds again sprout and become a new kalpa. Can you see any parallel between your personal meditation and Brahma's breathing? You breathe in all the world. Then you breathe out the entire world. When there is no breath, neither in-breathing nor out-breathing, pralaya has taken place, everything is destroyed. Then who remains? Only the Lord. In yogic terminology, that is called keval kumbha. There is no out, there is no in, there is a silent quiet. Not holding the breath forcibly, no. So anyway, so Narada went in, along with the breath of Brahma, he went inside. And the next kalpa came, Brahma breathed out again and he was born with the rishis and the marichas and other people. He was also born. From then on, his only job is to fly around, chant Narayana all the time. There was a great rishi who gave him the mantra to chant. Who is that rishi? One who taught Bhagavat to Parikshit. Who is that? So he met Sukha. So everybody knows. I don't have to worry about my memory. Sukadeva taught him Narayana. Namo Narayana. So from then on, he chanted Namo Narayana. Narayana, Narayana. Took his veena, played it, sang songs and wandered. Whenever there had to be trouble, he would come create the trouble and so that you sort things out. Why Narada creates trouble? Because it's dangerous to be status quo. One has to shift. Otherwise you remain with your own images. Your own. Something has to shake and break it. And that's what Narada does. This is the story of Narada. It is also said, after Veda Vyas finished writing the Brahma Sutras, which is the dizzy heights of intellectual speculation about the Supreme Reality. Narada once passed through and saw him sitting, looking a little bit dull. So he said, how come Vyasa, you have written the Brahma Sutras? I asked, why are you, your face is, yeah, he said, I don't know, but my heart seems to have gone dry. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, I have a suggestion. Why don't you write to Bhagavat, which is the Leelas of the Lord, in ten avatars? Perhaps you, your heart will again get activated. Because intellect can sometimes completely cover the heart. I can go on into dizzy hajaham brahmas. Huh? Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mitya and all. But continue to eat and drink shit and all that. Which Brahman doesn't do. That's exactly what Madhvacharya said. <laughs> then somebody told him, but the Upanishad, 
it says aham brahmasmi so that is brahman saying aham brahmasmi not you <laughs> anyway <clears throat> so he wrote the bhagavad that's how yasa was made to write the bhagavad now in this between the heart and the head there is a constant tussle only in spiritual ways okay not in other things generally if a young person falls in love with another what happens physical life love and also please note everybody falls in love nobody stands up in love <laughs> which means you have to uh, sacrifice certain things for Right. So even in ordinary love, what happens? The person who is fallen in love is ready to sacrifice anything: family, house. Why? Because it is so compelling. <coughs> Maybe hormonal, but it is compelling. And then <laughs> that's all. They they are ready to jump into a well if required. Now can you imagine something? Many many. Dimensions beyond that ordinary love. What happens in that love? Sometimes the intellectual speculation, which means if I do this, this will have all set aside. What is the aim? Only that. We should give you an example. In this way, it happens in a bigger way there, where it is not the mind, the brain that works, but the heart that works. In fact, there is no contradiction between jnana, jnana, and bhakti. I'll come to that. Some people think there is a contradiction. Now, regarding the heart and the head, I have a nice uh, real life story to tell. It's not about me. Um, there was a Great uh, yogi who became the president of the Ram Krishna Mission. If you go and see the very much, you see the Hall of Fame. All the twelve disciples of Ram Krishna. No, sorry, all the presidents, past presidents of the Ram Krishna Mission. All of them are clean shaved, except one was a big beard. That was Virajananda, who was the first. Non-direct disciple of Ram Krishna to become the president. So, whose disciple could he be? Swami Vivekananda. He was initiated by Swami Vivekananda, taught by Swami, given the mantra, everything from him. He was his. So, he became the head. Only the head can initiate. So, he was initiating hundreds of people. Teaching them, as he went along, his favorite book, of course, was the Upanishads. As he went on, suddenly he realized that his heart has become dry. This is mean the brain is what feeling is not there. So important feeling. We like to think that we are cerebral human beings, but actually we live by feelings. No. Yes or no? <laughs> so he was a little worried. How come I am the disciple of Swamiji, and what has happened to my heart? Because Swami Vivekananda, even though he taught Gyana Yoga and Dhan Dhyana Yoga and so on, his heart was always agog with bhakti. In fact, his guru Ram Krishna Paramahamsa has said that people think that I am a bhakta and you are a jnani. Actually, I am a jnani, and you are a bhakta. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, "How come my heart has become dry?" So he was wondering what to do. That time, Sharada Devi, the holy mother, was living in Calcutta. She died very late, the old age. Somebody told him, "Why don't you go and ask her? Maybe there is a solution. Who knows?" He said, "I don't know because she doesn't teach anybody." So he went to her. 
in bow down to her. She didn't allow him to bow down because she said, first of all, you are a sannyasi. Second, you are a disciple of Narayan Swami Vivekananda. You don't bow down to me, sit down. And then he told her, I want to ask you a question. She said, I don't think I know anything for answering your question. All that I have is what I absorbed by living with Thakur. So I don't know what you ask. We'll see. So he said, my heart has become empty. There is no feeling. It is dry. Like the desert. Mind is working. I can define Vedanta for you. Hmm. He said, Swami, uh, Narayana initiated you, right? Yes. Hmm. So he asked you to meditate on your Sahasrara, right? Yes. And by the time Virinanda, how does she know all this? <laughs> she is just a village woman, unlettered, living there. He gave you the center to, yes. Ah, she said, that is the problem now. Shift it to the heart center for some time. Hmm. You will be fine. Afterwards, if you want, you can go back. But now, bring your attention. Visualize the Supreme in your heart center. Hridaya. Horodaya. <laughs> and then, see what happens. So he went back. And uh, shifted his attention with a little effort. And on the first day itself, he was filled with a flood of joy, which he had not felt for so long. His heart became active. He started feeling more for others. He became a very sensitive person. And all the people who were initiated by him later on felt the difference. <coughs> Because when he gave the mantra, it was as if a flood was coming from the heart. So this intoxication in the inner is the most important element of bhakti. For this, two things are required. First, we should understand the limitations of the human intellect. In fact, people think, Vedanta, Upanishads are teaching us to, yes, according to the Upanishads, the one who is most intelligent will very soon realize the limitations of the intelligence. Hmm? Because <coughs> it is true that Jain, the Gayatri, the last sentence is, Deho Yona Prashodayat, okay, which means, stimulate my understanding and when my understanding is stimulated very soon if I am not a complete idiot I will realize the limitations of my intellect up to a point intellect can take beyond it it cannot because we are dealing with a different department then what happens then is the heart that takes over not the physical heart please you know that is the heart, the feeling that takes over. While it is necessary sometimes to go there through intellect, once you reach there, it's, it becomes irrelevant. What does the Upanishad say? It says, En manasana manyute, that which even the mind cannot conceive. Here, when they say mind, they are talking about intellect. That which the intellect cannot even conceive, that is the true reality. Then what can conceive of it? Is there no way out? The heart. Surrender. Surrender not to somebody. Don't come and hold my feet, I am surrendering. <laughs> Surrender to the Lord, to the Supreme. Not to a human entity. So, You see that there is no contradiction between the wisdom teachings of the Upanishad and the Bhakti teachings on one hand, because they say the same thing in a different way, saying that, okay, now you know that your intellect is limited, move towards your feelings, towards your heart. 
Otherwise, we can simply sit and speculate. Brahman and Atman are one. Ah, maybe. Oh, no, not one. Yes, one. Go on. Which is also the reason why Ramanuja Acharya started what is known as the Vishishta Dvaita. Because he found that he had nothing against Shankara, but he found that they are becoming too dryly intellectual. There is no feeling. There is no connection. So he established the theory of it is one but at the same time different, which means you should worship. And therefore, instead of calling the Supreme Reality Brahman, he called it Narayana, Sriman Narayana. And he, he agreed that the Jivas are parts of Narayana, but the whole is Narayana, not the parts. And it is absolute, in its absolute essence, it is of course the Brahman. But we need to link, we need something. So, we also talked about uh, Narada after his mother was bitten by a snake. Now, one minute. So, you see, for most people, Dhyana, Yoga, Vedanta is better because of our limitations. Only the highest seeker touches Bhakti. So don't worry, you will not easily become Bhaktas. Oh, sorry, you will. <laughs> Bhaktas of the Lord are not M's, but... So anyway, so how Narada, after his mother also died, let go of all attachment and said, this is the end of it, and moved off totally, fully to the Lord. There is another story from the Puranas which illustrates this in a different way. I am giving you so that you understand the idea of what bhakti is. Bhakti is not having devotion to the Lord for some purpose of yours. But the mere idea of having devotion to the Lord becomes your enjoyment. Nothing else. Like many bhaktas have said, please don't give me all this and misguide me. Take me to you. Who cares? The very act of devotion is joyful. Not as if it's an end. Not you're trying to... It's already joyful because there are no strings attached. You're free. You're not expecting anything. You're not... Because nowadays, you know, people are there in little bit... Somebody went to a yogi and said, there's a black spot on my right foot. She said, yes, can you change it to the left? <laughs> So the Bhakta doesn't care. He wants that. He doesn't want anything else. So there is another story in the Puranas to illustrate this. It's about Uddhava was very close to Krishna. There is also a beautiful book, many few people have read it, called Uddhava Gita. Bhagavad Gita everybody has read. Uddhava Gita, it's worth reading. <coughs> So once, apparently, Krishna told Uddhava, I'm going to go for a walk. Would you want to come with me? Uddhava was a little worried because going for a walk with this mischievous man, I mean, person, Krishna, you don't know what is going to happen. <laughs> Unexpected things can happen. So he said, if you behave yourself, I will come. <laughs> He said, sure, I'll be him. You come in. So he took him. They were walking along. After some time, Krishna said to Uddhava, feeling very, very thirsty, can you get something for me to drink? So Uddhava looked around. They were standing in front of a huge bungalow. So he thought rich man's house, we can go and ask for big shots, okay. So he went inside and the man came out. He said, look at my friend standing outside. He said, oh, the dark guy there. 
Krishna in Sanskrit means dark. Who was talking about darkness yesterday? Kabir. I didn't want to intervene, so I kept quiet. Krishna itself, when Shukla is white and Krishna is dark. But we are always looking for girls and boys who are white. <laughs> Look at the ads, <laughs> newspapers. <laughs> anyway, so, so he is telling that yes, he is very thirsty. He wants to have something to drink. So Dava said, oh, so the rich man said, oh, that's very easy. Those guests are supposed to be God, you know. Atiti Devo Baba, call him inside. So they brought him inside, made him sit in a nice thing. He, of course, the rich man didn't know who is Krishna and so on. He only sees dark, handsome young man. Uh, so handsome that he's afraid to bring the women out from the janana. <laughs> so, he makes uh, uh, some juice or something, whatever for him, we don't know, and he gives it to him, and Krishna drinks it, enjoys every bit of it, says, oh, so nice. Then he says, this is the most tastiest drink I've ever had in my life. So Dava is looking, wondering what is coming next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that So he puts up his hand and says, may his riches increase. May he become richer and richer and have more properties, whatever. Those days, uh, blessings also included more progeny and so on. And uh, family planning had not been introduced. <laughs> he blessed. And then, Uddha breathed easy. Nothing has happened. Out of, <laughs> it's perfectly logical. Somebody gives you something, you bless them. Then they said, okay, let's go. So they walked out. We had hardly gone in about another half a kilometer. Krishna <laughs> said again, Re, I, I'm feeling thirsty. <laughs> the other water. Just now you had a drink, right? No, no, but I'm feeling very really thirsty. You know, I'm the Lord. I can feel thirsty at any time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then they were standing just outside. A small little ashrama. Hmm. And there, there is this very small kutir there. There is nothing except the ashrama, the kutir, little source of water coming from the river. And even that had dried in such a situation. And the yogi is sitting there, one fellow alone, one yogi. Krishna said, go and ask him. And, the, and the, there's a small goshala. There's a cow tied there. Only one cow. He said, Dava, go and ask him. Tell him I'm thirsty. So Dava goes with folded hands. He's a yogi. I'm very sorry <laughs> to disturb you, but my friend, the dark guy standing outside, do you see him? Yeah, I see him. He wants something to drink. So the yogi says, oh my god, even the last drop of water in my kamandalu is finished because I just did Abhishega for the linga. What am I to give him? There's nothing in the house. Then it suddenly remembers there's a cow. He said, I'll give you some milk. <coughs> so he goes to the cow. He had already milked the cow in the morning, pats her head holds her, embraces her and said, please give some milk and then milks. What do we do when you go to milk? One shot on the head. <laughs> <laughs> milk and he takes the milk and gives it to Krishna. He drinks it and he says, this was even tastier than that juice which that guy gave me. He tasted, I enjoyed it. I must help this man. So, may his cow die. <laughs> so I said, my God, now, what kind of logic? He gave you the last drop of milk from his only cup. And you are saying, let the cow die. What does it mean? So the 
Krishna says to the Halukar, so many years you have known me. Right? Your logic and my logic are different. Don't you know that? So he said, but what logic is this? Tell me. He says, this yogi guy is a great bhakta of mine. Thinks mostly of me. But he's, he loves that cow very much. <laughs> his only attachment, his only obstacle to me is that cow. Now, if I remove that obstacle, he will directly walk into my heart. This is bhakti. So the story is the yogi actually walked into the heart. No more worried about his cow or his water, only the Lord. In a second, he realized that this dark guy standing there is actually the absolute darkness <laughs> in some form. <laughs> Now, I'm compensating for not bringing <coughs> Guna to the world. My nose is too big. <laughs> so, the other, another story, very nice story. Please listen. You know, Bhakti grows when you listen to this beautiful stories from the Bhagavad. People usually say, Bhagavad is for little, is in the village, old grandmothers. <laughs> How do we? The whole of the Brahma Sutras starts with Atato Brahma Jignasa. It's covered in the Bhagavatam through little, little stories. So storytelling is so good, part of our tradition. And nothing gets in as good as telling a story. Huh? What would you read, for instance, the young people? A book on other dimensions or <coughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> so that you know the other dimensions. With the other dimensions, you'll read 10 pages and put it away. Physics. <laughs> it's the heart that we live with the heart. <laughs> when I go to library, <laughs> school libraries and sometimes the children and the headmistress or headmaster come and they want to keep a copy of your book. So please sign it, so I sign it. The children are <coughs> looking curiously, so I tell them, you know, when you're a little bit fed up of Harry Potter, read <laughs> <laughs> So, <clears throat> yeah, another Beautiful story from the ancient sources. One day, you know, this Krishna went away from Brajabhumi and he was staying in Dwaraka with his paraphernalia, his wives and so on. But in the night, when he was asleep, Satyabhama, Rukmini, they all heard. You suddenly in the dream say, ah, where are the Gopikas? You said, what is this? <laughs> we are serving him with all our lives. <laughs> we are looking after him. We are, and he is still talking about the Gopikas. What is so special about the Gopikas out there? Maybe secretly he is doing, you know. So, they said this to Krishna many times when he woke up. When you talk to him, kept quiet. And the story is that one day he's, he lay down on the bed and said, I have a terrible stomachache, get a physician. So the physicians came and they gave many medicines. The stomachache will go only when he wants it to go, right? So they tried to give, no, nothing working. Then, Narada came, saying, Narayana, Narayana. So Krishna tells Narayana, uh, the wives are also there to Narada, do you know any cure for this? Narada says, yeah, yeah, there is one cure. I just now met a Vaidya who heard about this. So what is the cure? It's very simple. 
You have to put the dust of your feet in his mouth. He'll be fine. Rukmani said to Satyabhama, how can we put the dust of our feet into the Lord's mouth? It's impossible. I mean, we may go to hell, a hundred lives. So what to do? Krishna says to Narada, you go find out. If there is anybody who can help me out. So Narada travels to Vrindavan. The gopis are all standing there doing various things. They come rushing because Narada has arrived. And uh, first they begin by saying, well, are you coming from Dwaraka? He said, yes. What is a Krishna? And then he said, no, 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 don't talk about him. Terrible fellow. <laughs> he left us and he went out there and he's happily enjoying So we don't want to hear about him. So now they really don't want to hear. They came back. But tell me, is he okay? <laughs> Sometimes I said, that is exactly what I was going to do. He is not okay. So what is his problem? He has a stomachache. So where is, why are they not giving him medicine? The cure nobody can give. What is the cure? The dust of one's feet to be put in the Lord's mouth. That is the cure. No one is ready to do it. Gopi said, are you crazy? What kind of idiots are these people here in Dwarka? Come, they said, bring a sack, all the gopis. <laughs> <laughs> Fill the whole gunny bag with dust. Narada, one hand, Veena, and another hand, gunny bag. Returned <laughs> to Dwaraka. And the Dwaraka Dish said, What happened in a feeble voice? I said, You're really sick. <laughs> He said, I've got you one gunny bag, dust of the feet, took money and who did this to with the Kopikas? They said, we don't mind going to hell 100 times. If Krishna's stomach it goes, that's all we want. We won't, don't want anything else. He has not done justice to us, that's okay. He's gone away, but the one drop, he put it in his mouth and got up. And then he told Rukmani and uh, Satyabhama, Now you know why in the dream sometimes I say, Say, hey, where are the Gopikas? <laughs> so this is uh, the other story about Bhakti. Bhakti is not socialism. Jiyo or Jine do. No? Maro magar Jine do. So only when a person has reached that point, one can actually have a darshan, not through 1000 kriyas a day. But then they should be done with the only intention of that. I'm discouraging people from taking kriya. <laughs> So, um, that is bhakti. When you don't care for yourself, you don't care what is happening to you. You want only to have the darshan of the Lord. And for that, you don't mind anything. Go to any length. That's also the meaning of sannyas. Well, you abandon everything, but you want only that. Um, if you think those who study Vedanta have no bhakti, you are terribly mistaken. That's not true. The contemporary example of a great jnani was Ramana Maharshi. And standing before the temple of Shiva in Dhruvannamalai, he used to shed tears of dukes. When people read the Bhagavad near him, his chest would be soaked with tears. Because he figured out that what he found here, after asking, who am I? You can't find out who am I by simply wearing a cowpin, sitting and saying, who am I, who am I? 
the life has to change. There are many such who are my surround. That the life should be so centered and dedicated. So please, I'm not saying every one of you should become like that, okay? You can't. Somebody will try it. Just try the seeds. Maybe it will sprout here and there. But since we are on the subject, this is what bhakti is all about. <coughs> Not all about, this is the beginning of bhakti. Uh, there are even people who welcome pain to find the Lord. You know the famous story of Kunti Navarra. Hmm? You know who Kunti is first? You know who Indira Gandhi Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> who is Kunti? <laughs> so, the matriarch of the whole entire race. So, after the Kurukshetra war, Krishna is saying goodbye to everybody to go back to Dwarka. So, Arjuna and his equals, he hugs. Those who are elder to him touches their feet. Krishna. So the matriarch of the family is Kunti. So he goes to Kunti and says, I'm going off to Dwarka. You if you need any boon from me, this is the right thing to ask. Ask me for anything you like. There's a nice dialogue. Kunti says, please stop this drama of yours. I know who you are and everything I know. Don't try this. You started the war. And then you joined us and made us win. And now you're saying, I'm going to Dwarka. You go nowhere, you're everywhere. What is this going to Dwarka? But then you ask me for a boon, right? Okay. I want one boon only. What is that? Bring all the sorrows of the world on my head. I mean, Krishna is a little taken aback. What kind of a boon is this? She says, why? She says, because it's only in sorrow that usually human beings call on God. In the, there is an expression in the Granth say Kabir actually. Dukhme Sumiran is up kare, Sukhme kare na koe. Sumiran means Maran. She says, so every time, every day sorrows will come because you will ask them to come, because I am asking you. Whenever the sorrows come, I will think of you. And I have one guarantee. When I think of you, I will get your darshan. That I do. So now what more do I need in life? I'll keep calling you. You keep coming and showing a blessed face. Now what else do I need? That's my life's aim. This is bhakti in the extreme. Please do not imitate. Please do not imitate. Because when one little calamity falls on us, then all aims are over, finished. Then you start not to please bring that back. Only one who really has that kind of complete one-pointed attention. What is one-pointed attention? Jnana. Can really move towards that Supreme Being which may be called Brahman, or may be called Krishna, or may be called Devi. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa always referred to the Supreme as the Mother. So I'm sure I've disturbed many minds. 
But they believe me, it's a joy is joy. So much so. That joy that you get, even when you set your foot on the journey, cannot be got anywhere else. I'm telling you. It doesn't mean you should leave your home or anything. But keep that as your first priority. In the very fact that there is a story that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu missed seeing the vision of Krishna for a long time. So he kept crying and asking for it. Then suddenly under a Kadamba tree Krishna appeared. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, why did you appear? Why did you do this? Because the pangs of separation were so sweet for me. <laughs> when I see you, it's gone. <laughs> so that pangs itself is enjoyable. So person who doesn't, who enjoys that, doesn't wish for anything else. Only that. And therefore, most towards it. And if you think, like Ramana Maharshi, if you think that Adi Shankara, who wrote all the commentaries on the Vedas, all the commentaries on the Brahma Sutras, Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, other textbooks like Viveka, Chudamani, Trik, Triksha, Viveka. You will think, why did I read all this? To make people understand. And yet, it is the same Shankara who sang Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam, Bhaja Mudamathe. Samprapte sannihite kale nahi nahi rakshatri dukran garne. In the name of Govinda, you fool. Shankara said. In the name of Govinda, you fool. He said. Why? Your death time is drawing near. Samprapte sannihite kale is coming near. Here, if you sit down and do grammatical commentaries, nahi nahi rakshati, there is no way out by indulging in hair splitting grammatical and arguments. Nahi nahi dukkra na karani. Then what? Vaya govindam, vaya govindam. Who said this? Shankara. And on the other hand, it is the same Shankara who wrote a very devotional textbook called the Saundari Lai. It's supposed to be a tantric textbook because it hides the Sri Vidya and so on and describes the chakras. But the very fact that you would write something like Saundari, you know what Saundari is? Lehri. Intoxication. Soundary Lahiri, intoxication of the most beautiful divine. And Soundary Lahiri is dedicated to the Devi. And many slokas are so devotional. Some Bhavani, Tonda, Se, Mai, Vitara, Drishti, Sakaruna. So it is only the false Vedantins who don't appreciate Bhakti. They think they can catch the Supreme Being by calculations. Time is drawing here, sing the name of God. Shankara said. So I got worried suddenly everybody starts saying going now. So this kind of sums up in a coconut shell. I'm from Kerala, no? So instead of nut shell. <laughs> the meaning of bhakti. Chirata. <laughs> 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 
So that's it. What else shall I say? I've said everything. Secret is out. So even if you do Kriya, please understand that this when you chant the Guru Mantra, you must chant it with that much devotion. As if you are ready to look of anything but just want the blessings. From there, if you start, the Kriya will also be good. Do you want to do the Kriya review now and finish it up? Yes, Hmm? Or uh, do you have questions? I know there are hundreds of questions. <laughs> questions, 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 no answers. Now, um, those who are going to take Kriya today, there were two young ladies, I don't know, young or old, who wrote me a letter saying, we are already practicing some Kriyas, so should we know, not you? So can, should we add this to Should we or should not? Who asked me? I don't know. Somebody gave me a note. Gave me a note. See, I think it is better to figure out carefully and stick to one rather than get multi-purposed. You know? Because, you know the story of a man who fell from the tree? Hmm? Falling, he suddenly thought, who will save me? So he said, Narayana, he shouted. He was still falling when he thought, what if Narayana didn't hear? <laughs> Shiva, Shiva. <laughs> and then before touching the ground, Igneshwara, he said. What happened was, whenever each ruler wanted to put his hand, he was shouting something, they thought, ah, he will hear. Cut it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, there is no compulsion that you should take Kriya. I am not in the business of making disciples. Hmm? So, there is no such compulsion. If you practice something, practice something. If you want to change, then change. Then don't mix and get into a complete mess. Huh? Okay, let's start the career with you.